from growing plants on lunar soils to recording the sounds of aurora. These are some of the stories that we talk about on this episode of Scientifix. I am Mohana Basu and every week on The Prince Scientifix, I talk about some of the top science stories of the week from across the globe. This week, scientists at the University of Florida have managed to grow plants on lunar soil, paving the way for farming on moon if and when humans plan an extended lunar stay. Although the plants grown on lunar soil is not as robust as plants grown in earth soil, by studying how the plants responded in the lunar samples, the team hopes to figure out how to someday grow more nutrient-rich plants on the moon and thrive in deep space. Arabidopsis thaliana, native to Eurasia and Africa, is a relative of mustard greens and other cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower and Brussels sprouts. It also plays a key role for scientists due to its small size and ease of growth. It is one of the most studied plants in the world and used as a model organism for research into all areas of plant biology. Scientists already know what its genes look like, know how it behaves in different circumstances and even how it grows in space. To grow the plant, the team used lunar samples collected on Apollo 11, 12 and 17 missions with only a gram of the samples allotted for each plant. The team added water and then seeds to the sample. They then put the trays into terrarium boxes in a clean room. A nutrient solution was added daily. After two days, they started to sprout. Also this week, in a major breakthrough, researchers from University of New South Wales have been successful in producing electricity from what is known as the nighttime solar power, the heat radiated by the Earth at night. The process ultimately still harnesses solar power, which hits the Earth during the day in the form of sunlight and warms up the planet. At night, the same energy radiates back into the vast cold void of the outer space in the form of infrared light. Using a semiconductor device called a thermoradiative diode, composed of materials found in night vision goggles, researchers were able to generate power from the emission of infrared light. Although the amount of power generated at this stage is very small, around 100,000 times less than that supplied by a sonar panel, the researchers believe that the results can still be improved in the future. The research team believes that the new technology could have a range of uses in the future by helping produce electricity in ways not currently possible. Meanwhile, scientists have discovered an ancient mola belonging to a young Denisovan girl who lived about 164,000 years ago in a cave in what is now Laos. The discovery is new evidence that ancient human lineage, previously known only to dwell in caves in Siberia and China, also lived in Southeast Asia. The study shows that Denisovans lived in a wide range of environments and latitude and were able to adapt to extreme conditions from the cold mountains of Russia and Tibet to the tropical forests of Southeast Asia. Previous research suggests that the ancestors of modern humans split about 700,000 years ago from the lineage that gave rise to Neanderthals and Denisovans. However, genetic analysis of fossils of these extinct lineages revealed that they remained close enough to interbreed with modern humans. So far, researchers have discovered only five Denisovan fossils, three upper molars, a finger bone and a jaw bone. This is why there is very little known or understood about them. The exact places where the Denisovans may have lived is also debated. The fossils found so far all came from mainland Asia, but genetic research suggests that populations in Oceania and Southeast Asian islands have Denisovan links. Also this week, analysis of a stone named Hypatia from the Egyptian desert indicates that it could be the first tangible evidence found on Earth of a supernova explosion. The researchers from the University of Johannesburg conclude that the stone came from the type 1A explosion. The rare supernovas could be some of the most energetic events in the universe. Since 2013, the team has been uncovering a series of highly unusual chemistry clues in a small fragment of the Hypatia stone. 
in their new research, they have pieced together a timeline stretching back to the early stages of the formation of Earth, our Sun and the other planets in our solar system. Their hypothesis about Hypatia's origin starts with a star. A red giant star collapsed into a white dwarf star. The collapse would have happened inside a gigantic dust cloud known as nebula. That white dwarf found itself in a binary system with a second star. The white dwarf star eventually ate the other star. At some point, the hungry white dwarf exploded as a supernova type 1a inside the dust cloud. After cooling, the gas atoms which remained of the supernova started sticking to the particles of the dust cloud. The gas atoms from the explosion were caught in the surrounding dust cloud which eventually formed Hypatia's parent body. At some point, Hypatia's parent rock started hurtling towards the Earth. The heat of entry into the Earth's atmosphere combined with the pressure of the impact in the Great Sand Sea in southwestern Egypt created micro diamonds and shattered the parent rock. Also this week, scientists at Aalto University made recordings of auroral sounds which show that the phenomenon is much more common than has been believed and occurs even in the absence of visible northern lights. The researchers have been studying sounds associated with the northern lights for many years. In 2016, the team had linked recordings of crackling and popping sounds during an auroral event with temperature profiles. The data demonstrated that aurora are sometimes associated with sounds which result from electrical discharges across a temperature inversion layer about 70 meters above the ground. Temperature inversion layers are areas where the normal decrease in air temperature with increasing altitude is reversed and the air above the ground is warmer than the air below it. The new recordings were made at night when no northern lights were visible. When the recordings were compared with measurements of geomagnetic activity, a strong correlation was evident. The 60 best candidate sounds were all linked with changes in the geomagnetic field. This showed that auroral sounds occurred even in the absence of visible northern lights, which means that the phenomenon is more common than thought. That's all for this week. This is Mohana Basu, Special Correspondent at The Print. If you like our work, do consider paying for a subscription to the print. You can do so through the link in the description box below.